thank you for your word and for the Holy Ghost in this place. Lord. Thank you, Father God, that you say what you want said and you do what you want done. We yield ourselves to you tonight, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and ask you to take full control and do what you want done. In Jesus' name. Like I said, Amen. 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 <laughs>
find sometimes people in that maturity that uh, unfortunately do that. Pray for them. Even if they do, it's, it's better to you know suffer for being wrong when you're right than to last right and be bitter. I mean, you may. Yes. That's what I was looking for. Like I know, like here, there's some people here that are in charge that you know we're supposed to obey and stuff like that. But when you leave here, like I know there's different church groups and different ministries, yeah. like you said. So it's whoever you would go to. You want to get involved with the church? You need a local church wherever community God leads you, wherever you go. And you submit yourself to that ministry. Join up with that group. And then attend and talk me. You know, talk to your pastor. Keep in touch. Be close with them so that they know what you're going to do. You know, they can help you. Absolutely. Thank you. Very, very important. Uh, if you're in a mega church, you know, they say mega, you won't get to the pastor. But he'll have people under him that you can go to, like for home groups or Set little cell groups that they would be able to. Yeah, the pastor would be the chief, but you in a huge church like Bay Center or something, you ain't going to get to that pastor most likely. You might, but uh, I mean, that church is huge. So, but he's got plenty of people to help, so you could be good at those. Anybody else? Yes, sir. So in Joshua, when God commissioned Moses, or uh, he, he uh, commissioned Joseph, Joshua, right? Um, he says, from the wilderness and this Lebanon is as far as the great river, and the river of Euphrates, for all the lands that they died to the great sea, forward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. So that would be Israel, that's the real, like, marking of the house. Of is what Israel is supposed to be. Yeah. That, that's my understanding. I'm not real good with history, but that's my understanding. So now it's like a little. Yeah. <laughs> very small, but very loud. Wow. Yeah. No mess with Israel. Absolutely. They try them over there, but uh, they learn the hard way. Don't no mess with God's people. We're God's people today. He takes up for us as well. Although we're worldwide, it's not like a particular geographic location. We're worldwide. We're the body of Christ. And you don't touch God's anointing. You don't mess with His people. Or you're going to be messing with God and you don't want to find out the hard way that don't work. Anybody else? Any questions? Okay. Christ. That's a horrible thing to say. But uh, 
unfortunately. I'm sure there are. Um, so let me ask you a question. You want to ask me a few questions? Please. What is what does faith mean to you? What do you what do you think? How do you define faith? In my I mean, yes, I need to find faith. My trust and belief in Jesus. Your trust and belief in Jesus. Did I hear you right? Yes, that's good. Yes. Having hope in what he said. Having hope in what he said, that's good. Did you have your hand up? You just yeah, think um, you know. Um, yeah, um, I guess just believing in something that I can't see. Okay. And Yes, it's an internal though. It's in the heart, isn't it? Yeah. It has to be in the heart. I'm going to hate it. Anybody else want to take a jab at it? Yes, you do. I would have moved in today when I first came to start from that thing that she brought to me. It's going to come to fruition. Okay. All right. It's not about what you see, is it? What you see has nothing to do with it. Um, so, Hebrews 11 and 1. So many Hebrews got you, but I'm going to read that. Hebrews 11 and 1. Or it's on the paper, it looks like the third church. Yes, sir. Now faith is the substance of things on the and evidence of things on the So faith is the substance. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things we want to see. So that. Defines faith. Now faith is is telling you what faith is. Right? It says it's the substance of hope, and uh, he said it had to do with hope over here this morning. and that's right. So then, what is hope? See, y'all thought y'all was going to ask me the question. You reap what you sow, and now I'm asking you. What is hope? Yes, Jesus. Jesus is hope. Okay, that's good. You can't get any better than Jesus. Yes, sir. Don't you have a relationship with me? 
So it's good to have teachers. We need them. They are a gift to the ministry. But you're still accountable on your own for, for what you believe and what you live by. So my definition of faith is that faith, you can't have faith without hope. hope you have a hope, and your faith is what brings that hope, the future of hope into the present tense. It's the substance of the hope of the future is. Okay? So faith makes it now what I hope for. Alright? You follow me? Hebrews 11 1 said now faith is the substance of hope. It's the evidence of what I don't need to say. So faith is present tense, it's now. And it's based on my hope. Now, we got to say that hope, being future, hope is, is not a worldly hope. There's two kinds of hope. One is that I hope to make it home tonight without a problem. It's a chance. I really don't know. It's, it's, I hope to get a job and make a check on Friday. Again, it's a, it's a chance. Not just a chance to get the job, but maybe they won't pay you for some reason. And maybe they're crooks. So it's a future event. It's a hope. It's a 50-50 chance. That's what most people think of hope as. But that's not Bible hope. And when you read hope in the Bible, it's not that. Bible hope is based on the promise of the Word of God. And that's guaranteed. It's set in stone. It's immovable. Unshakable. It can't be tampered with. It is what it is. You can misinterpret it. You can abuse it. You can twist it. But yet the scriptures remain the same. They are what they are. And the promises you find in here are future and they're hope. I'll give you an example, a common example. How many of you are in heaven today? I mean, you're walking around in heaven up there right now. That's our hope, isn't it? How many of you have your new glorified bodies that God promises? Anybody? Well, if you did, you would never have to fight flu or COVID or any kind of sickness. You wouldn't even need to get fed because you won't be supplied. Anymore. So that's a hope, isn't it? It's a very plain, biblical hope that we're going to go to heaven. He's going to come get us. We're going to get a new body. That's going to be the end of our faith and the completion of salvation. We're going to be in heaven with Him forever. Forever. Would you agree with that? But that's all a hope. That's why Romans says, I'm saved by hope. And remember, it's a Bible hope. It's not a chance. And what it means is that although I have salvation now, it's not yet finished. It's not complete. In the sense, I don't have that new body, that heavenly body that Jesus got in the resurrection. Um, and I'm not living in heaven. I have a portion of heaven here. The kingdom of God is within me here. But it's only a deposit. It's a foretaste. It's earnest money so that I will be able to believe and hold on until I get there. Now, that deposit, that earnest money, that seal is faith. And because of your faith, it brings what you're hoped for into reality. Now, how be it? It's a portion. It's not all of it. But it's enough that you can get a taste of it and say, it's mine now. How many of you, if I ask you, you say, you would say, yes, I'm saved tonight. Right? Even though you're not living in heaven yet, you don't have a glorified body, you'd still say, 
Tonight, I am saved. If you don't, we need to talk before we leave. Because you must be saved. Now, what is that? That's now faith bringing hope into the reality now. A substance now, making it real right now. You get that? So, I hope for heaven. I have a portion of heaven on earth to keep me, to enjoy, to prove to me God is. He, he, he does what He says. He watches over His work and perform. He cannot lie. It's impossible for him. So I get a taste of it on earth by faith. My faith accesses the grace <coughs> or hope. It brings it into the now. So that now I can say to you guys, I am saved. I do have heaven in me. It's not finished, but I have it. So, here's what I'm saying. That's the way everything from now on happens in your walk on earth between now and heaven. Is that you have a Bible promise, which is your hope, Guaranteed, not chance, guaranteed hope. You have that Bible promise, which is your guaranteed hope, and your faith, faith which comes by hearing that promise, your faith brings it into reality so that you live it today. Albeit it may be only a part of it, but you still get it today. Enough for you to walk in victory, enough for you to defeat devils, enough for you to move mountains. And do supernatural things. Enough for you to do the works that Jesus did. And greater works will you do. Because he's gone to the Father. And left it in our hands. But if you don't exercise yourself in hope. I will promise. And faith. To make it a reality now. To live it today. Then you won't know God. You'll know religion. And that's where most of the churches are. They, they know religion. They're religious. They know how to tell you how to dress. And what you need to look like. How wear your hair. They know how to tell you, you know, well, you need to be on time, do this and that. They, got, they, they have some good functions and things in the sense of discipline, but they just become religious. You can't earn yourself heaven. The only way you can get to heaven is by faith. In the grace or the hope that he set out for you. And so your every motive, your every waking hour is to pursue a life of faith based on that promise of heaven of yours. Hallelujah. To know him. So here in John 17, 3, somebody read it for me. John 17, 3. It's the first scripture on the paper, or you can just look it up. John 17. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So that says, This is life eternal. If the Bible tells you something is, that's what it is. <laughs> right? I mean, you can have all kinds of theologians go, Well, brother, we've got to explain that away from the, you know, from our uh, theological perspective here. And, uh, you know, they can destroy it. But when the Bible says something is, then that's what it is. Read it again, please. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So life eternal, this is eternal life. Where is eternal life going to be spent for the Christian? Heaven. Right? With the Lord. Glory to God. So, this is what you hope for. Eternal life, right? Heaven, right? John 17, 3. This is Jesus' prayer, by the way. This is the Lord's prayer. This is the real Lord's prayer. You know, we say the one that <coughs> all his disciples to pray. Our Father, which Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. They call that the Lord's Prayer. But this is the real Lord's Prayer. John 17. The whole thing. The whole chapter. Yes, sir. Right, so this one mm -hmm. is a dumb question. Nothing is a dumb question. <clears throat> so you're 
telling you that. There's any promise in His. And we believe in it through faith that it will just definitely come to fruition. That's correct. And it will come to happen in the time that God says it's going to happen. You know, I know it sounds like, so like, for, for me, what I'm referring to in my Bible is Mark 10, 28 through 31. And I was talking about how you leave your house and your family. Right. And God's going to restore all that. Right. If I, if I continue to hold on to that and believe in that, that, that you, you believe 100% that that's going to come Absolutely. He can't lie. He cannot lie. The second, faith, the faith is what brings that into it. Faith is what accesses it. That's correct. So, 2 Corinthians 1 20. So, somebody read it. You got to read it. 2 Corinthians 1 20. That's a great question. So. Now, I want to. Uh, so, you know, water on fire there for you. But there's a lot of things Satan can do to trip you along the way to try to prevent you from receiving that promise. But the generic answer is yes. If you believe my faith and you don't let go, God will honor He cannot lie. Okay? And even though it looks like maybe everything's going down the tube and it ain't going to happen, we don't go by what we see. Never, he, never did He tell us to go. So you hold on. Second Corinthians 1 20. Anybody got it? Second Corinthians 1 20. You got it? For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes to Christ. And so through him, they have spoken by us to the glory of God. Boy, that's beautiful. What what kind of translation do you got? In IV. In I like that. Read it again. Read it real loud for me. Where everybody can hear it. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes to Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So, from the glory of God, through us, no matter how promises, how many promises are in there, they're yes. You hold on to that scripture. So when the devil tells you it ain't working, you say, but God said it is. Okay? It's a warfare. It's a battle. It's what's in the mind. But it's a battle because... He declares right here that every promise you can find in there is yes. There's a lot of people that teach, and they, they mean well, and they'll teach, well, God answers in one of three ways. Yes, no, or wait a while. Okay? Nowhere in the Bible is that thing. I just read you 2 Corinthians 1.20 that said all of his promises or yes. So your mind wants to rebel against that and say, yeah, but you know, I prayed this one time and it didn't happen, so I don't know about that. Doesn't right? matter about your experiences. Your experiences will lie to you. We don't live by experience. We live by faith. We live by faith based on the Word of God, which is our hope. He has a hope that that Scripture will come to pass. His faith will bring it into the now. I make it a reality now. Hallelujah. But all the promises he said are yes. Not some of them. Not maybe. Not if you hold your nose right. Not if you tithe enough. You can't buy them. He said all the promises are yes. And amen. To the glory of God through us. That's strong. There is no scripture that tells you God's going to answer your prayer with a no. Matter of fact, he says the opposite multiple times. Somebody find John 14 and read verses 12, 13, and 14. John 14, verses 12, 13, and 14. Go ahead. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So twice, two verses, he said, he repeated it, so you be sure to give it. Whatever you ask in my name, I will. That's the will of God. He says, I will. That's the will of God. I will do it. If you ask, then he said, just in case you missed it, or in case your mind said, oh, I don't know about that. 
He said it again. If you ask anything, I will do it. That's powerful. But you know, the mind wants to rebel. Say, I don't know. I don't see how he can do it. You know, I tell you, I used to think, well, if I could see a way for him to do it, I could do it. If I could just figure out how he might do it for me, I'll believe. Let's not forget. I thought it was the one. And what that means is that I have faith in how I see it done. I don't have faith in the promise. I have faith in how I figured out he can do it. So that's not the case. And that'll get you in trouble. Because that'll make you miss the answer to your prayer if you're walking by sight. So I, I, let me go back. I'm submitting to you tonight. That the only way to know this God, according to John 17, 3, when we know Him, that is our salvation. That's our eternal life. It's not joining a church. It's not being water baptized. It's not um, tithing a bunch. It's not being a pastor or being an evangelist. <clears throat> it's knowing Him. Period. It's a relationship with Him. A love relationship. Daily. You love Him. You talk to Him. You think He talks to you. You endeavor to do what He says to do. So, you know Him. And if you know Him, then you have what He says is eternal life. That's what everybody's after. Heaven. To miss hell and go to heaven. And so... When we know Him personally, then that's eternal life. But I can't know Him because He's a faith God. He created everything by faith. He spoke that there be and there was. That's a lot of faith. And so I can't know this God without a life of faith because His wisdom far superior. His wisdom far superior to the smartest guy on earth, whoever that would be. I don't know, there's probably a lot of smart guys out there. You guys are smart. But your wisdom is nothing to you. So you can't be bad. It can't be by how many degrees I got behind my name. It can't be because I am a certain uh, national. Some of those things may be all right, but... By a life of faith. That's the only thing without prejudice for the believer. How else would he be able to okay each of us to get into his heaven without some kind of merit of our own other than faith? How else? There is no other way that I've thought of. I mean, it's the wisdom of God that far surpasses any kind of wisdom. He figured all this out. Because he made us. He knows we do what we believe. We say what we believe. You know that? Bad or good, you live what you believe in your heart. Bad or good. And if your heart goes sour because you've been tempted and you believe incorrectly, you'll act on that. First you'll start talking about it and then you'll act. So God knew that. That's why he set it up by faith. That even a young child can exercise faith and be saved. Or an old person like me could exercise faith and be saved. That's the only parameter, the only way, the only channel that I can think of that there's no prejudice. There's nothing I can do to boast about. I did it. I did it. You didn't do nothing. You just chose to see what he did. You were just smart enough to yield to his wooing when he wooed you and called you. And you said, okay, I'll, I'll give it a try. I don't know about you, but I was pretty weak in mind. I said, okay, Lord, I don't really care about you. I don't really think you're even real. But if you're there, help me to want to want to know you. What a stupid prayer. But it worked. <laughs> Help me to want to want to know you. Because I can't do it myself. I don't really want to know you. I mean, I'm happy. I'm okay. I'm making money. I'm doing good. I'm in the entertainment business. I'm fine down here. But he was 
dealing with. I said, okay, help me, if you're real, help me want and have the desire to know you. Because I don't do that. Boom. Boy, did he give me that desire. I still have it. It's snowball. It's more than that than ever. I want to know him. Everything about him. So, eternal life is knowing him. The only way I submit to you that you can know him is a life of believing him. Taking these promises, putting to the test. Now that sounds a little weird, putting to the test, because we think of God putting us to the test. But God doesn't put us to the test, the devil does. It's not God testing you. It's the devil. Why? Why isn't it God? Because God knows already what's in your heart. Why does he need to test you? Well, Satan will test you, and the reason God allows that is because you'll get to see what's in your heart. You'll see what's in there. Because a lot of times you think, hey, I'm doing good, I believe, bless God, I'm ready. And then when the real trial comes on, you just, you just fold. You just fall over. Well, I thought I was ready. Well, so you can, God doesn't send the trial. But still in the trial, you can learn. You can see your own heart. So it shows you where you're at. What you need to do. Because living by faith is not just merely saying, I believe. It's not just merely saying, okay, I acknowledge there is a God. He lived some 2,000 years ago. I believe so I'm going to heaven. Not at all. If it were that easy, then why ain't everybody healed? Why don't anybody get sick in here? Because I believe God heals. Just saying, I believe he's in heaven. I believe he heals. But I still have to fight off pain in my body. I have to fight off flu bugs that try to attach to me. Why? If I'm healed, why do I have to do that? Because I say I believe until the fire starts lit up and under me and I'm cooking. <laughs> and it's not so easy to believe then. Because every circumstance, every voice, everything is zeroed in and screaming at me. Not I'm still a small voice like God. They're screaming at me. It's not working. Maybe you misread it. Maybe you don't understand. Maybe God really don't care about you. He tells you all kinds of lies. And the only way you can walk through that victorious is that you decide emotion, you decide God can't lie. I've got His Word and I'm not going to move. I'm not going to waver. No matter how hot the fire gets. And when you walk through that and you see God miraculously deliver you, that's knowing. That's not somebody teaching you about Him. That is your experience, Godly experience, opening up to you who he really is by revelation. Such that nobody can steal that from you. No demon in hell can take it from you. Because you have seen him do it. And you know it wasn't you. You know you didn't ask anybody for money. You know you didn't put out hints there about, well, pray me about this, brother, because you know I got this thing going. That's how most people put hints out for God to help. Really, they want you to help. Let's be men of God and live by faith. Let's put him right on his word. His mind. And say, Lord, you said, I don't need to tell everybody. You, in fact, you said, go in my closet. And me and you talk, not tell everybody else what I have need of. And you don't find that very much in church today. Well, they broadcast it. They send letters out. Set up from the pulpit. And they beg like beggars out on the street. Give me $20. It's not enough. Give me 50 They have an auction in the church. Yeah. It's not faith. No wonder the church is so weak. No wonder the church is so... I don't know the word for it. Pitiful. God help us. Because people need to believe God. Not what they're seeing. But that's a process. That's a discipline. It's not easy. If 
you think it is, you haven't tried it. It's not easy. When your body is hurting, and you say, by his stripes I was healed. But your body is hurting. That's tough. When you need money to pay the rent and the money ain't there, that's tough. But it ain't too tough for God. And the only way to know Him, like this is saying know Him eternal life, that this is eternal life. The only way to know Him that way is to walk through that and see Him deliver you. And when you see Him deliver you, nobody can take you. No demon in hell. You got something that Jesus said to Peter, I'll build my church on this rock and the gates of hell will not prevail. That's the way to get it. Hebrews 11 3 says, Through faith we understand. Hebrews 11 3 says, Through faith we understand. It's talking about how God created everything. But the, the part that I want to share with you tonight is, He's saying, You want to understand God and His kingdom is working unless it's through faith. Because that's how he made us. That's how he made everything. And that's the way. So I love y'all. God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for these gentlemen, Lord, I love them. I thank you, Father God, that you challenged them to live a life of faith bringing their hope into reality now. In Jesus' name, not be deterred or not be persuaded by satanic influence or temptation, but to make decisions, quality decisions, free of emotion, to know you. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray for you. Lord, I pray for them as they face the days to come. It's not easy.